lot of different, different people um, involved in this. And, and really, it's, it is this interdisciplinary um, collaboration of, of research, biologists, acousticians, engineers, trying to measure and, and better understand both the basic behavior and how these, these animals respond and react to different kinds of sound. Um, the overall objective is for us to be able to give a better scientific basis, a more direct empirical scientific basis to estimating the, the risk of impact of different types of sounds, particularly military uh, sonars, um, for the Navy as well as regulatory agencies, primarily, primarily NOAA. And um, two different parts of, of the Navy, um, the Environmental Readiness Division of the Operational Navy and the Office of Naval Research are the, um, the sponsors uh, of the work, but it's pretty closely connected with NOAA. And, and the reason for that is that the Navy conducts operations and prepares um, documents saying this, this is what we're doing, this is what we think the impacts are, in collaboration with, with NOAA, the regulatory agency that sets the rules for um, those kinds of activities and what kinds of mitigation measures and things like that. And, and that process is um, informed by the science and both the, the Navy and NOAA uh, recognize that you know, we need more direct and specific information to do that from both sides. So there's this partnership between the, the Navy sponsoring the work, NOAA being involved in, in the work, um, Jay Barlow from the Southwest Fishery Science Center and some other people are, are directly um, involved in it. Um, I was involved from the NOAA side before I, before I left the agency. The scientific research permit is actually held uh, by NOAA. We work with the people from the Channel Islands Marine Sanctuary. Um, we have an, a, a research permit um, uh, through, through NOAA, work with other parts of NOAA on that. So it really is a, a you know, kind of a, a collaborative um, effort between NOAA and Navy to get better information for both planning activities and assessing the impacts of them. And um, you know, why, why do we need this, this kind of work? And, and some people will know this, um, um, that, that this, the driver for, for doing these kinds of things. We know that in certain circumstances, like this picture in the upper right of the Bahamas in 2000, there have been times where there have been military training exercises with, with mid-frequency sonar where animals have stranded, particularly animals like this beaked whale that you see here. They seem to be more prevalent um, in, the, in the stranding events. What, what exists is a vast uncertainty about what caused them. Was it a direct physical impact? Was there a behavioral component to it? Are there other species that are, are involved that we just don't see? What are the precursor types of behaviors that lead up to that? And that uncertainty has really fueled a lot of disagreement. Um, disagreement, litigation, media coverage, a lot of interest, um, really. And, and um, some, of it, some of it good that's fueled some research, some of it um, not so good. Um, but a, everyone really has agreed that we need to understand better what's going on. And one of the, the key factors has, or questions has been, what do these animals do when they hear these kinds of sounds? What are their, what are their responses? And can we use these kinds of behavioral response studies, and some of these things are developed from studies with, um, with birds, where you play song, songs of one bird back to another bird, and you look at their behavior before, during, and after. And it's that kind of, of approach, which I'll describe in some more detail. I won't mention all these reports, except to point out in that, uh, those four reports there, the one on the bottom left, I'm always trying to remind people of this, you probably can't read it, but we've got a link to it. If you follow the link to this talk, you'll, you'll get back to it eventually. Um, the federal agencies, and I was involved in this before I left NOAA, the federal agencies have put together an interagency task force to say, what should we do on the issue of sound in the oceans? What are the priorities and, and actions the federal government should do for the next year? And um, I just try to remind people that that's out there. The agencies have said there's a bunch of things that are important that they should do. One of them is this, this kind of research on behavioral response study, which, uh, which we're doing. Um, and just the history of this briefly, um, in 2007, 2008, we went to a place called AUTEC, which is the Atlantic Undersea Testing and Evaluation Center. It's a Navy listening range in the Bahamas. Um, and used their listening sensors to monitor whales and, and where they were and, and sounds that we made. And, and, and 
in ways that I'll sort of describe uh, that's similar to, to the work in Southern California. But we started in, we started in, in the Bahamas um, because they had adapted this Navy range to listen for, for marine mammals. And we managed to, to tag um, some, some whales um, down there, beaked whales and pilot whales, and, and get some preliminary results. Um, we moved in 2009 to the Mediterranean Sea around Alberon Island in the Western Med. Um, we had a little less luck there, in part because we didn't have a range to help us find the animals, but with these listening sensors, um, we're working on some pretty, pretty tricky species as well. But we did, we did learn some things from, from the med. Um, in, in parallel with some of our efforts over here, the Norwegians and the Dutch, um, with some support from, from our uh, ONR, uh, the U.S. Office of Naval Research as well, have been doing some similar um, work pretty specific to uh, European kinds of sonars and looking at, at animals like killer whales and also animals like herring that the Norwegians care about, how they, they respond to sound too. Um, and on a, a, a different track, but looking at... at uh, Sounds in oil and gas exploration, there's a, a large ongoing project in Australia looking at humpback uh, whale responses to sounds. And then sort of building from Bahamas and Med to 2010 in Southern California, um, we came to our project in, in, uh, that we call SoCal 10, um, in part to have some more options in terms of species. There's a large diversity of different kinds of species in Southern California. I'll talk about the, the variety that we managed to work with. Um, and just to give us a, a variety of, of areas to work in, too. We have some offshore areas and, and nearshore areas. And um, so it's envisioned as the first of a five-year plan, five-year research strategy as well. So we're sort of hoping that we're, we're kind of taking what has been built from these previous studies and other ongoing efforts and kind of settling it into, all right, we've got the opportunity to work with a variety of different species in different areas, different areas within Southern California over the next um, five years. So bear that in mind as I go through this. This is, I'm giving you the first year of, of what we hope is five. Um, the overall objectives we, we sort of laid out ahead of time, we wanted to, to put some of these monitoring tags on a variety of different species and, and, get, and get at their baseline behavior. You can't you know, necessarily determine what is different or what's impacted without understanding what they naturally and normally do. And so while we have this desire to sort of jump into the, the, uh, the effects studies, on some of these animals, we don't, you know, we don't know basic um, diving uh, or behavioral capabilities. So that, the baseline stuff is actually pretty important. Um, another main objective was to do these controlled exposure experiments. You'll hear me use CEE or, or this behavioral response study maybe. I might use it interchangeably. I'll try to use CEE. What we mean is using a controlled, we're controlling the sound and exposing it to the animals and measuring what they do before, during, and, and after that. Um, as this is the first year of five, we're trying to, to get a sense of what's the right configuration. We came from in the Bahamas, and you might have seen that picture in the med, we were on a 300-foot oceanographic research vessel, kind of big and expensive for one, but also not real agile and not real adaptable. So we're trying to go a little bit smaller and a little bit more flexible, a little bit faster. Um, and we're also building up to, hopefully in the last couple years of this project, using the actual sound sources themselves, real, real ships, to, to test what the responses of animals are to the to the real thing. We're approximating it with these, these scaled sources, but we want to ultimately get up to that. That's what the animals are experiencing in the wild, and there are some differences. So we're trying to build up to that, and then also some of the data we're, we're getting, we're feeding back into um, the Navy's efforts to monitor um, what, what, uh, what animals exist and, and, uh, and live on, on their, uh, their ranges, uh, principally the, the, or the Southern California operating range. So the overall approach is um, to take this, this previous kind of method that we developed in, in, the, in the Bahamas and the Med and integrate it with a number of ongoing studies from Cascadia and Scripps and Woods Hole, uh, I mean, and um, Southwest Fishery Science Center that are, that are already ongoing. There's a lot of marine mammal work being done um, in Southern California. We're trying to build on that 